Hey dude, check this out. Look what we got back. Hey Roman, I got the paper right here. Come look. Is that is, is that McCadden? Yeah, that's McCadden, our local okay. GMC dealership. Can okay. you guess what we got back from the dealership? The Hummer's back? The Hummer's back. Yeah, let's go. Let's well, go dude, check it out. That, that was quick because it was only like a day and a half that the problem occurred. Yeah, I know. They, they got it done right away. You know, um, we never actually did a formal introduction <laughs> video to the Hummer. So let's do it now. <laughs> let's do it now. Okay. And, uh, the, and the reason for that, of course, is uh, that we had a little bit of an issue. Hey guys, I'm very unhappy. I'm in a brand new Hummer in traffic and the truck has taken a complete dump and it will not go into gear and it won't go out of gear. Uh, and I've tried a restart. Uh, so now it is in safe mode. That has done nothing. All right, here comes the tow truck. It's a big truck, which is good, because we're gonna need a big truck. Let's, let's pull the battery. Uh, and let's talk about what they did to fix it. Yes, and, and why we bought the, the truck, right? Yeah, exactly. So what happened to me was I was driving back from a video shoot where we were drag racing it, and unfortunately uh, it got uh, stuck in traffic because the software would not allow it to go into drive or park or neutral. So we eventually figured out that what we had to do was basically disconnect, disconnect yeah. the 12 volt system. Disconnect right? the 12 volt, uh, and then we drove it to McCadden, which is our local GMC dealership. Yes, uh, and. Uh, uh, they gave me this. So what do they do to it? So here's what they say. So first of all, we want to thank the guys at GMC a Cadillac dealer, first of all. So John Barry and Zach Brick yep. there. And also Mikhail Farah from GMC. He was also helping us out. And here's what they say. Uh, well, first of all, they described the problem. Romo already did that. Um, and they said a technical assistance advised to update the serial data gateway module due to a known software anomaly. After update is complete, test drive the vehicle. If no other concerns are noted, deliver the vehicle to the customer. So basically they updated the software and drove it, test drove it. So is it working? Okay, let's, let's power it up and let's see what happens. Uh, of course it's quiet. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're back in business, Andre. Are we going to listen to your chill station? No, I'm not going to listen to my chill station. Let's okay. instead uh, talk about why we bought the Hummer uh, and why we uh, traded in the Lightning. So as you know, we're not like most people in that we don't buy these, we don't hold on to them, this doesn't become a long-term vehicle. What we do is we buy them so that we can test them uh, and the reason we buy them is because we think that if we use our own money, and I believe this is true, then we've got skin in the game, right? Because we get both vehicles from the manufacturer and there's about, usually about a half a dozen a year that we buy. Yeah. Uh, and then the way that that business plan works is that we take the previous vehicle that we bought and we use that money to buy the next one. So uh, with this one, we traded it in on, we traded the Lightning in on this one so that we could uh, basically afford to buy it. Yeah, totally. So, and we usually, of course, there is a military helicopter above us. So, so if you're hearing noise, it's not the Hummer. It's actually the military helicopter. Well, I like to say whenever we roll a camera, a helicopter lands and... <laughs> but in fact, it does. In fact, it does, yeah. Uh, so, um, let's uh, talk about the numbers. Yeah, so the numbers. So the F-150 Lightning was part of our big video series. You you, you may have seen it, Northern Lightning. Uh, we've kept that Lightning for what, almost four months-ish? Yeah, Three and a half months? Which doesn't seem like that long, but since we drove it all the way to Prudhoe Bay, we ended up putting 13,000 miles on it. In three months. Yeah. So we feel like that's plenty of testing uh, on a vehicle like that. So uh, we bought, that was a Lariat truck. We bought it for about $81,000, right? And then uh, we knew we wanted the GMC. So our friend, uh, Jason, right, who had a reservation on the GMC Hummer EV, uh, he wanted to kind of transfer it to us. But of course, we had to kind of buy it together, right? Yeah, because of the way the GM works and they don't want you flipping vehicles, which by the way, we don't do. We don't, we don't flip, flip vehicles. vehicles. We're not in the business of flipping, we're in the business of reviewing. So uh, like the uh, Bronco that we bought, uh, we basically bought it together with Jason, yeah. with the caveat that we're gonna do a shout out in these videos to the Dumb Friend League, yes. which is a great charity, helps people. Animals, yeah. Yeah, helps people find dogs that might naturally not find owners yeah. so uh, check the link below if yeah. you want to help out some great animals um, and um, and that's why we end up with the Hummer and in terms of finances how much did uh, we end up paying for this and how much did we get in 
trade. Yeah, so we're still living in crazy times, right? Yes. Where vehicles and pickup trucks specifically are still worth a lot of money. So we went back to McCadden because that was the local dealer for GMC. Uh, and actually we traded the lightning in at basically no loss to us as yeah. far as price. Yeah, McCadden gave us $81,000, which is exactly what we Which paid. was the original sticker price yes. on that truck. So that that was, I thought, was a fairly good deal. And then this truck starts at around 110, yep. 111, but we you added a couple of options. I did, I did. I added the spare tire, which is necessary if you're gonna which go Which is behind road. you. Yeah. So uh, the spare tire mount is in, the, in, is in the bed of the truck, basically. And then you also added auxiliary lights. Yes. Which and, are on the A-pillar. Yeah, so I, I did the lighting package and I did the off-road package with yeah. the spare tire. So that off-road package also gets you more than just a spare tire. It also gets you uh, a recovery uh, kit. Yeah, which is kind of a bag. We yeah. can show that. Um, we can show that. Yeah. We'll stop and we'll, we'll flow over and show that. Uh, and the lighting package also gets you more than that. It gets you not only these auxiliary lights, but it gives you puddle lights that say Hummer EV. Okay, not on the ground. Yes, and then yeah. it also gives you lights in the step. Yeah, and also those lights are accessible via the auxiliary panel uh, here in the system. So, so that's pretty neat. Yeah, show that. It's right there. So we have several auxiliary, of course, buttons, and I'm not going to turn them on right now because their covers are on. But you we, can actually we would melt the covers. Uh, you would melt the covers with the LED lights. But because we've done that in the past, <laughs> <laughs> we've done it on our Jeep before. Yes. So this is the auxiliary panel, which is pretty cool. And you know, GM has a lot of different features. Uh, that we can go over in other videos, right? like cameras. Yeah, we'll go over that. We don't want to go do, do this in this video. That's Stay tuned, that's still coming. Um, so, like I said, so we got $81,000, but we got more than that because by trading it in on this truck, the Lightning, we also saved considerably on taxes because you only pay taxes in Colorado on the difference between the trade-in and yes. the actual cost of the vehicle. So we ended up saving another like $7,000, Andre, which I thought was pretty good. Yeah, because, uh, well, this Hummer ended up being almost 115. Yes. So 115 minus 81, what is that? that, that like 34,000, right? right? So we're paying taxes on the difference, which, which yeah, it's, it's a help. Yeah, it's, it's a big help. I think, like I said, it was like $7,000 in, in difference. Uh, so, you know, the question might be, and after the truck left me stranded, people were like, well, you bought a piece of, you know what? Uh, but, you know, we're, we're not buying this personally. We're buying this to review it, right? So part of the process is, you know, we like to show everything uh, that happens with it or that doesn't happen with it. And we also like to have our, like I said, our skin in the game. So with our skin in the game, you know, it's our money. And so when things do go wrong, we feel it very deeply. <laughs> And we share that. Yes. And yes. we're very transparent about it. And everything. we have big plans for this truck. You know, we want to keep it for several months at least. Um, and also, so we Tommy... Have to, we have to keep it for six months, Andre, because uh, what GM does is if you try to flip it, uh, then if you do it before six months, you void your battery warranty. We don't want to... No, we don't want to void any warranty. So we're going to keep it for at least six uh, months. And also, Tommy did a full video about what kind of a summary of what happened to the F-150 Lightning that we had previously. Yeah, so in a, in a second, we're going to roll that video. If you're interested in our experiences with the Lightning, uh, then that's coming. But uh, let's show them some of the features that we got. That's why I'm pulling over here in this little parking lot. Let's show them some of the features that we got that were extra. So I just want to kind of make people aware why this was like $5,000 more than a standard truck. So these are medical military choppers. Yeah, I see that. It's part of the off-road package. Uh, they give you this, Andre. But he, I haven't even looked in there. You know what? Oh yeah, there? yeah. I, I think I've seen this before. This is, first of all, it says Hummer on it. Yeah. Uh, pretty nice bag, and then it has several different, several different off-road accessories. So it's got stuff like gloves. You have a tow rope. Yeah. Well, this thing weighs a lot, so we have a tow rope. We also have shackles. D rings. Yeah. So. And of course, we have other vehicles approaching. Uh, here and also, of course, we have bags for the um, the panels, the removable roof panels on this truck, um, and also the l charger kit. So this is basically 240 volt and uh, 120 volt cable. 
the Ultium cables. So we have all the cables here as well. So we can charge on the road, we can charge at home, we can do level three charging, right? Yes. Um, and also the app, we configured the app to monitor the truck. So let me show you what other, what other thing came with the lighting package. Let me close that. Come on with me over here. So this truck, of course, has the spare tire. Um, and uh, Ian, you're probably gonna wanna jump in here because I wanna show you. Um, so what you get with the lighting package is you get lights in there, Andresi. Oh, for the step? Yeah. Yeah, and then coming up here with me, Ian, not only do you get a spare tire, which does take a lot of your space away, yeah. uh, unfortunately, but check this out, Andre. Look what we oh, got here. Are you gonna open this? Yes, I'll show you. A little key? Yeah. So you get a traditional jack, uh -huh. uh, and you get you know a traditional toolkit. I haven't even opened the toolkit yet. Okay. Hold on I, a I assume it's got. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's see what it's got. I'm, I'm assuming a screwdriver. Sorry. This is. Oh yeah. So it's basically um, a lug wrench. A uh, lug wrench, and these are 35s. These are big tires, and this truck weighs a lot. What's in here? A uh, little, I think, plates to put underneath the truck. Oh, so Actually, it doesn't roll? You know what we should do in what? another video? What, try to change the tire? Change the tire. Because when you're going off road, that's really important to understand how to change a tire if you need to. So, anyway, um, yeah, that, that, those are the accessories that we got for it. Uh, and we've been, unfortunately, uh, doing a bunch of reviews with. Uh, GM's truck and so you guys might be confused if you're seeing some reviews that we shot and we don't shoot these We shoot them in chronological order, but we don't publish them in chronological order So for instance, uh, there's a video that's coming where we compared uh, the Hummer to the Lightning when we still had it Yes on uh, the Ike so we did Hummer versus Lightning versus Ike and that was GM's truck that wasn't our truck uh, and um, Unfortunately, GM truck also had a spare tire. It looked identical to this. <laughs> because the first uh, edition are all white. Uh, so um, eventually, all the videos will be our truck and not GM's truck. Uh, but right now, why don't we cut to Tommy's video and tell you why we sold it uh, and what happened to the Lightning in the four months that we owned it. This is our long-term fully electric Ford F-150 Lightning. We've owned it since the beginning of June of this year. We've put 13,000 miles on it and we're selling it already. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why and we're going over the good, bad, and the ugly. This Lightning is the Lariat spec. It had an MSRP of $81,000. It's gone up a little bit since we bought this truck and now this exact trim would probably be right around $87,000, $88,000. But anyways, the Lariat spec comes equipped with these 20-inch wheels and these grabber all-season tires. Now, we swapped out the tires for an all-terrain tire and check out the effect it had on the range. In this video, we're gonna find out how wheels and tires affect range. Behind me are two Ford F-150 Lightnings, the all-electric F-150, and Andre, where are we going? Well, we're gonna drive over 160 miles today in both trucks. We're starting here in Longmont, Colorado. We're gonna go to Fort Morgan, a little bit of city driving, also a lot of highway driving as well. Okay, so at 90% charge in the Platinum, it says I have 284 miles of range remaining. Let me reset my trip meter and go on our standard loop. So we are sitting at 90% state of charge. The Lightning is predicting 281 miles of range. Of course, that's gonna depend a little bit based on your driving habits. Uh, but what isn't gonna depend based on your driving habits is the percent of charge, which they're both at 90%. So let's go uh, see what they do. Here's my official result in the Platinum with 22s, 2.0 miles per kilowatt hour, um, 80, per, 80 miles left. I went, according to this, 158 miles, um, but I think we went a little bit more. And here's my percentage. 31% remaining, 80 miles of range left. So you can see there, two miles per kilowatt hour average, um, just over three hours to do that trip, 159.2 miles. And if we go here into the middle of the vehicle, we can take a look at our current charge. 29% state of charge, says 75 miles of range remaining. So 
with the stock tires on, we were at 36% with these all-terrains on. So this time we used 7% more compared to last time. Um, and last time we used 54% of the battery, so what, 13% more uh, energy used uh, with the all-terrains than the standard tires. So obviously a really big range hit from going from an all-season to an all-terrain tire, but I think it's definitely worth it if you live in a snowy environment because those BF Goodrich tires are three-peak rated and they're really good out in the gravel, they're really good out in the wet, and they're going to be really good out in the snow. Now, Let's talk about range in general. The EPA rating over 300 miles on this Lightning, and that is plenty, 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 plenty for daily driving. If you're considering buying an electric vehicle, drive around in your gas vehicle for a month or two and write down how many miles you really drive on a daily basis. I bet it's gonna be 30, 40, 50, and if that's the case, if you have a place to charge up at home, this is enough range. In fact, we recently took a, uh, a standard range Lightning on a road trip that has a lot less range than this, and even that is plenty for daily driving. 200 miles over the Rocky Mountains, two mountain ranges, highway. It says right there, 214 miles. 100% charge. Oh, so okay. we have to go 198 miles, okay? Okay. 198 miles. Technically, the truck says we can do it. Okay. But um, we have to go through the Rockies, bro. Well, it doesn't. Know, it's a brand new vehicle, so it doesn't know a lot of its history, or it doesn't know. It doesn't know a lot of its. History. It's I not mean, AI, bro. It's not going to come and get us. <laughs> we made it. We are at their headquarters in Boulder. Uh, the trip meter says 196 miles. The truck is saying 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour average after the entire trip, including the uphills. That is impressive. This thing did way better than I expected. 58 miles of range left, 196.2 miles traveled, and look at the state of charge. 29%. So we regained a lot going downhill. Yes, but we also used a lot going uphill. I mean, I know we had, you know, some of both, so let's calculate, right? So we used 71%, so 98 kilowatt hour battery uh -huh. times we used 71% of it, so we used 69.58 kilowatt hours to go uh, 196.2 miles. So let's divide that. 196.2 miles divided by 69.58. So yeah, 2.8. The truck is basically accurate. And dude, uh, th th uh, so that means times 98, the maximum range of this truck is actually about 276 theoretical. Range issues, at least empty, not a problem, but let's talk about towing. The most popular video we did with this Ford F-150 Lightning, which has since received over two and a half million views, is a towing comparison between this electric truck and a gasoline GMC. Let's play that right now. We have an epic road trip range test for you with two very different trucks. We've got a gasoline powered V8 GMC Sierra and the all new fully electric F-150 Lightning. We're going on a road trip with two identical trailers and we're gonna see which one can go further on a single tank with the GMC or a single charge with the Ford. So you can see the state of charge there, 100% is predicting 282 miles of range, but that is not towing. So we're gonna input the trailer info and it's actually going to recalculate that range which is pretty cool we'll see how spot on that is when we bring it down to like under five percent state of charge so here are the measurements for our trailers so 25 feet long trailer width eight and a half rounded up to nine trailer height about 12 trailer weight six thousand pounds and now we're sitting at 160 so it subtracted about 120 miles of rated range by adding in those trailer inputs so we've gone six miles and we've lost 10 miles of range already and now it's saying we're gonna reach the charger in Pueblo that I was hoping to hit at one percent and that's come down from six percent in just six miles so I think we're gonna have to recalculate our strategy a little bit maybe stop well before Pueblo well, we are down to 21 percent state of charge and we just checked our uh, our plug share app Dude, there's just nothing between here and the springs, so... Oh man, the, car, the truck's saying driving range low now. So, I think I'm gonna have to take the next exit, dude. I'm not gonna make it to a fast charger if we keep going this direction. I'm gonna have to turn around and find one closer. I'm gonna have to slow it down a little bit, I think, dude. It's gonna be tight, tight, tight. 
I have a lot of range remaining. I'm not gonna tell you quite yet how much range I have remaining. I wanna keep it a surprise. So Andre, 85.9 miles. Basically cutting in half his No, mileage. it's a third. Oh well, yeah, it is like a third. 320 isn't it? miles is his range. Uh, he went 88 miles. Well, this is insane! You still had a little bit of space. So to be fair, the Lightning, I had another 9%. So we could have gone maybe another 9 more miles, been right at 95 miles from 100 to 0. Still, and it's a third of the range, dude. My truck is showing 129 miles left of my range. How about I just go back to Longmont and forget, just leave Tommy here. Wait, so you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna try to make the trip all the way back on one tank. Exactly. Where, where I got completely stuck one way. Yeah, why not? Hey Tommy, this is uh, Andre and Nathan. Hey Andre, how's it going? Hey Nathan, how's it going? Hey, uh, we, we just filled up our truck, so we're, we're, we're here, we already filled up and topped off. Oh. I'm still like 45 minutes out. Now long distance towing, obviously the Achilles heel, right around 90 to 100 miles of range, realistically towing that 6,000 pound camper. But the biggest thing we've learned towing with this truck repeatedly is that aerodynamics are the number one most important factor when it comes to how far you're gonna be able to tow with an electric truck. So weight, of course, has uh, an impact, but it's aero, aero, aero. So if you can buy a more aerodynamic camper, if the loads you are towing are more aerodynamic, you're gonna have a lot more success success in towing long distance. However, if the primary purpose of your truck is to tow cross country regularly, probably not worth it. However, if you're towing in town, my dad did a video with uh, a Polaris, it's fine. At lower speeds, this thing tows beautifully. If you're just looking to tow your boat to and from the marina, short distance across town, or maybe across part of a state, this thing is just fine. Now today here in Boulder, we just took delivery of a new Polaris XP Scrambler 1000. My God, that's a mouthful. Anyway, uh, we're gonna take it up to the ranch to test it, but to do that, we need to do two things. First, we need to take this truck and drive it to the ranch to pick up the trailer. Then we have to come back here, load up the vehicle, and then take it back up to the ranch. Now, that's gonna be an interesting trip. So overnight, I charge this up to 90%, and we're gonna see just how much power we use and just how much power is left after we go there and back, there and back uh, with the new XP 1000 Scrambler. So there's really three numbers that I'm interested in. The first number is this one. How many uh, miles per kilowatt hour are we getting when we're not towing, and how many are we getting when we're towing? And actually, we can do three things. We can get it when we're not towing, we can get it with an empty trailer, and then, of course, with a loaded trailer. We are rolling up to Tumbleweed Ranch, and we've gone about uh, 22 miles, so it is about 23 miles from the office. And the nice number is right there, 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, uh, so that's gone up a lot. Let's look at the numbers now that we're almost back at the office in this second part of this journey. Uh, we are uh, down to 2.3 uh, miles per kilowatt hour, so we have lost uh, some of the efficiency. And in the next segment, what I'll do is I will actually uh, reset the trip two and then we'll know exactly what kind of number we're getting when we're actually towing something besides a trailer. All right, Alex, we just had a little bit of lunch and now we're about to do the third leg of our trip. We're at 72% of our battery. I reset uh, trip two to zero so we'll know how many miles per kilowatt hour we are doing. Uh, finally, uh, most power we have in one segment, 11% of the battery, we're at 61%. There you go, 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, once again, about 23 miles. One of my favorite things about the Lightning is just how fun to drive it is. Now I know that people don't necessarily buy a pickup truck because it's fun to drive, but it is an added bonus of the Lightning. Having that instant acceleration with the electrical architecture is just awesome. And you can blow the doors off of just about any car from a stop, um, especially up here at altitude. This truck is faster than it would be at sea level, which is completely backward from any internal combustion vehicle. And we've done a ton of drag racing with it. Let's play some of those clips now. All right, I'm lining up against a guy in a brand new Tesla Model 3 Performance and he's got leather gloves on, so he could definitely know what he's doing. I'm a little worried about this. Oh, he got a better launch. He's gone. Man, I slept on that start. I'm gonna hear about that in the comment section, that's for sure. There's 90 miles an hour. There's 100. 
there's a top speed of 107. Whoa, he got into the 12s, 11. About a second slower than a Model 3 performance. Yes, go TRX. Oh, it's close, but I've got him. The lightning is coming. I'm pulling away. He got a really good start. Come on, old friend. You can do this. Okay, now the question is, can he come back at me? I don't think he's going to do it. He's running out of runway. Yes! Fourth. Lightning takes it. Keeping the F-150 Lightning charged is surprisingly easy with one caveat. You really need a place at home to charge this vehicle. If you lived in an apartment complex, I still don't think the infrastructure is quite there yet for you. But if you have a house or a garage where you can install a level two charger, which is a 240 volt socket, this thing is a breeze to keep charged. Now we've installed a number of them on a couple of different buildings and it's always like a thousand bucks. Regardless of where we're installing it, it's between like a thousand and fifteen hundred bucks. But using that level two dryer socket, it's easy to keep this truck charged. Even if the battery is almost completely depleted, plug in in at home at 5 or 6 p.m. and by the time you wake up in the morning it will be if not completely charged almost fully charged so that has been an absolute breeze and let's do a little bit of math let's see how much it costs to charge up the lightning now typically we never bring it down to zero so if we filled up all 130 kilowatt hours it'd be a little bit more expensive but let's say we use a hundred kilowatt hours regularly of that 130 pack 130 times we pay 13 cents per kilowatt hour 13 dollars to get a nice chunk of charge into this lightning now fast charging on the road is um, pretty decent with this truck it's not crazy impressive it's not an ionic 5 which will do 10 to 80 percent in 18 minutes realistically you're probably going to plug in for 30 to 45 minutes depending on the charger but it is possible and the infrastructure is going rapidly so road tripping is certainly an option well we know it's an option because the team drove this very truck to Alaska. Let's play that now. We made it to Fairbanks. It was no small feat. And I don't know if you can tell right now, but it's almost midnight and it's still pretty light outside. I've never experienced this before. It's, it's quite incredible. There's two flow chargers right here in Fairbanks. These are the most northern chargers, fast chargers, in North America. They've got our whole trip here. Oh, cool. From the Inside Passage up to Tuck. Is it Tuck or Tuck? Tuck. 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 And of course, we're here in Fairbanks and now we're about to do this part, which is going to be the hardest part, right? Fairbanks, Coldfoot, Dead Horse. message we got well it's not a surprise we knew that Roman <laughs> but at least it's good to know that the car the truck the lightning yeah. knows this <laughs> yeah but the other thing I know is that we've got hundred and sixty one miles to get to Coldfoot and only hundred and fifteen miles of range David, we made it! Top of Anakin Pass! This is nuts. I love it up here. It's a little bit Colorado-ish. Makes me want to sing. All right, let her rip! Climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow, till you find your dream. That, Roman? I think for the low cost of $3.99, you can have solid gold TFL hits as sung by David. <laughs> All right, let's go. So, David, yeah. we have made it to the, well, the end of the road is right there. Uh, yeah. And um, the North yeah. Pole is 1,200 miles that, that way. way. So, uh, David, is this what you expected uh, to find at the end of the road? A bunch of uh, rusty barrels? Um, oil field buildings uh, and of course uh, tundra caribou and uh, lots of uh, migratory birds yeah i guess i guess i knew yeah. what was here now i do have to say i'm really proud of the team to have accomplished this task now um, we did take the inside passage from washington up to uh, the very base of alaska driving through part of canada and 
Ideally, I would have loved to driven that whole way, but we just have a fairly small team and we don't have the time or resources to devote into that one project. However, they still put several thousand miles on this truck, and in my opinion, they drove the hardest part from Fairbanks all the way up past the Arctic Circle and then back to Fairbanks to prove it was possible. And that brings me on to comfort. The the best part about road tripping the Lightning is the ride quality. This truck has the softest front end I think of any vehicle I've ever experienced. Um, even like a Gen 1 Raptor doesn't have the spring rate that this Lightning does on road trips. It just floats over bumps. Now push it around some turns, yeah it's miserable. It's like driving, I don't know, a coffee coaster with a bit of butter on the top. But who cares, right? It's a truck. It's meant for road tripping and on road trips the ride quality is insanely good. The interior however. Well, let me show you. Now there is a lot of stuff to like in this interior. The fully digital instrument cluster is nice. This ginormous vertical display is also quite good, but I'm not convinced that this is an $81,000 interior. Some of the plastic quality, some of the overall design is just a lot of gray. And what I learned primarily from owning this truck and then also living with the base model Pro is that you get like 70 or 80% of the experience of a Lariat in a Pro for a lot less money. Now that Pro has vinyl seats which aren't very nice and a plastic steering wheel which also isn't very nice. But the Pro has a standard digital cluster and a standard push button start. It has a big central screen which is like the same big screen you'd get in a King Ranch gas F-150 except it has manual climate uh, knobs and it's got dual zone automatic climate with actual knobs. I actually like the interior in some ways more on the base pro than the $80,000 Lariat. So that is kind of my big takeaway with this truck. If you can get your hands on a pro or like an XLT, save some money because yes, you don't get like the blue cruise in the pro, right? You don't get the power seats, but you get 70 or 80% of the experience. You get the same amazing ride quality, but for in some cases 20, 30 or even $40,000 less. Something else which has not held up very well over the past 13,000 miles, the driver's seat. This is just, I mean, the, the, the leather is starting to pull up here. It's starting to get creased and it doesn't look very good. So I think this is an issue that Ford should address. It could just be our truck, but um, certainly I'd be a little disappointed if this was my $80,000 truck and that started to happen. By far my favorite feature of the Lightning, which is kind of surprising, but I really think this is a game changer in pickups is the Pro Power Onboard System, the inverter, which allows you to tap into the ginormous battery pack of this Lightning. I can't express to you what a game changer this is for not only the world of truck enthusiasts, but just people in general. For example, that right there is our new pergola. Check it out, we got those really cool string lights located up there. I went on a date on the pergola and I didn't want to bring a noisy generator. Plug that thing into this uh, truck and you got yourself a really great evening illuminated by the power of electricity. We've also used the system to power electric cars. I'll play that video right now. Hey. Uh, hey, I need some help. Yeah, what do you need? Uh, we're out of electricity. We have plenty of 110 volt plugs, as you can see. So check out the screen here. If we go into the truck and go over down here to Pro Power on board, we can now activate the outlets in the rear. And just like that, we can start charging the Mini Cooper SE but unfortunately it's not quite that simple. We are now delivering electricity to the Mini Cooper SE, but if we check out the gauge cluster, we'll be completely charged by 11, 11 p.m. and that is tomorrow. So on level one, the F-150 charges very slowly as you'd expect because any level one outlet's gonna be very slow. So we need to go to level two, which means we need to use a 240 volt plug and this is where I was really stupid. In order to use the 240 volt plug with an F-150 Lightning or an F-150 Hybrid for that matter, you need a dongle. And I forgot the dongle. So I've got the adapter, we got the F-150 Lightning. Uh, let's see how it sets up and how it works. Power down timer is off. The vehicle will run to supply power to the outlets until Pro Power Reserve setting is reached. Okay. Okay, now we are at the four hour mark or four hours and four minutes. Uh, we've used up 21% of our battery here in the Lightning. So the Mini is at 79%. Here in the front of the Lightning, you can hear the fans going. Well, our initial estimate was five hours. It's just over that. The Lightning has used up 27% of its battery as displayed right here. Let me check on the speed of charging. Oh wow, it's a lot slower than it was. 
now we're with about 2300 watts or 2.3 kilowatt it really is an incredible system you can run welders off of it it just transforms what you can do with your lifestyle camping um, building projects whatever you want using the back of the f-150 lightning now we didn't have an opportunity to power a house with this truck we just well we tried working with sunrun um, which is kind of Ford recommended installer for doing the bi-directional charging. And uh, that just didn't really work out, unfortunately. So that was the one thing that we didn't have a chance to do. But if you do have a house and you live in an area susceptible to blackouts or brownouts, having this truck could be a game changer in keeping your daily life on uh, running. Now, another thing I'm not a big fan of with the F-150 Lightning is this integrated light bar. The top trims have it, the lower trims don't. Another reason to get the lower trim, I just think it looks kind of goofy and a little bit not really well integrated into the front of the vehicle but regardless of which lightning you get they all have the front trunk and this is such a useful feature that seems kind of like a gimmick at first but is actually an extremely positive um, aspect of the lightning this is an enormous front trunk and ford did a good job of actually keeping the lift over height low on like the rivian and what this means is that if for example you're doing an airport run it's raining which we actually had to do in this truck you got four people five people in the truck you got all the luggage typically in the bed you'd have to have a tonneau cover but then tonneau covers can be broken into right very very easily or rain can get in there and the lightning you just throw the stuff in the front here it's sealed it's lockable it's out of the way it's great for groceries there's just infinite number of possibilities that you never really think of when owning a standard truck and then you get the lightning and you're like wow that's brilliant plus you have four additional power outlets in the front um, with an another 2.4 kilowatts so that's also a really cool feature very very thoughtful and i'm really happy that ford integrated this now one aspect of the lightning which isn't quite as good as the gasoline equivalents in my opinion the off-road ability so independent rear suspension gives this truck a great ride but if you kind of poke your camera underneath there there's a lot of low hanging fruit especially the rear motor hangs very low it just doesn't have a lot of off-road confidence and the front end with that aerodynamic front splitter is just not what you need when you're tackling the rocks now it will do dirt roads just fine it's great at dirt roads it does have a rear locker but off-road capability in the lightning certainly not one of its strong suits you're good yeah keep going oh yeah I'm on something. Let me let me go. Let me show from the back. Maybe you can see what we're doing here. What's going on? So I think if I zoom on in there, you can see we are tapped out there on ground clearance. One of the issues, of course, are the side steps on this vehicle, but I'm not quite sure. I think we got a little bit of clearance to the side step. We might actually be hitting underneath the vehicle, and we're not quite clear of this obstacle. Ooh. Okay, now stop, 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 stop. Now go turn the wheel. Okay, now come back. So we talked about good, bad, well what about ugly? The passenger side looks to be a charge port. You have this flap, it's all cut out nice. You go to push in on it and nothing happens. This is all designed, they say for symmetry, but I just don't understand why. You can only see one side of the truck at a time. Do you really need to have a second fake one on this side? Plus if you are, there's other vehicles, electric vehicles that offer two charge ports like the Taycan, like the, um, the Audi e-tron GT, right? They actually have two charge ports. So it'd be cool if Ford offered that as an option. And the other ugly thing is actually Blue Crew. So this has the um, level two hands-free eyes on on autonomous technology and pre-mapped highways it's just not very good it kind of ping pongs a little bit it tries to take off ramps the super crew system that chevrolet offers is in my opinion far far better it's a lot less invasive on uh, where you're looking it's also just much more steady in the lane so blue cruise could use a little bit of work all right andre we were wondering whether we had blue cruise uh, which we paid for or whether we had to pay a subscription fee so what's the scoop and you can tell we have blue cruise because it says so right there it's kind of a tiny little thing so do we have it we do have it. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, we have three years uh, of, they call it trial, yep. but it's included with the Lariat F-150 Lightning in this case. If it's pre-mapped, it will go, like you can see now, it will go into this blue mode, which is hands-free driving. Can you see that? I can see it, yeah. So now you're in hands-free driving. So now I can just go like this and go about 500 miles this way. Do you have foot free driving too? Yes. <laughs> okay. No feet, no feet, no arms. Can you, does it do automatic lane changes? Uh, well, let me try. 
Uh, that would be a no. That would be. <laughs> you know, GM does that. The payload on this truck is 1,686 pounds, which is actually pretty good considering that this is a modern day luxury oriented full size truck. I've seen much, much worse. And if you want to see how a real rancher's perspective on this truck is, well, let's talk to David. We'll play that clip right now. You know, this is the first time I've ever driven an electric anything. Well, I did, I did drive a golf cart one time at this the is, golf course. This is better. This is better than a golf cart. This is better, better than a golf cart. It goes farther too. I bet it's a lot faster than a golf cart. Well, David is also a big block V8 man. Aren't you, David? Aren't we all? Yeah, we all? well, it's either, yeah, it's either a diesel straight six or a V8. That's all we have around my house. I will say that right off the bat, it does have good smooth throttle response. I mean, even when you're not trying to like lay a patch, it feels much like a gas powered, you know, four speed transmission. So I like that. The hybrid on the other hand, the other hybrid that I yeah, drove yesterday, yeah. it seemed like the, the pedal when you pushed it down, it didn't really know if it wanted to be in electric or in gas for just that split second, uh -huh. depending on how hard you pushed it. And this one is just smooth. I mean, it is like nothing is slowing it down or stopping it at all. So what's the plan with the Lightning? Who is it getting sold to? Well, it's being traded into a dealer for, drum roll please, our new GMC Hummer EV, it's finally showed up, but that's a really expensive purchase, so of course we have to pay for it somehow, so the Lightning is going away, but like I said, I think we've done just about everything we possibly could have with this truck. Now we paid sticker for it, which is about $81,000, and we're getting $81,000 out of it, so that's um, the monetary side of it, but guys, overall, I it's hard for me to express what a surprise this truck has been. Yes, it has its shortcomings, off-road capability and primarily towing range, but for hauling, for family duty, even for moderate to uh, decent road trips, right? It's very, very usable and it's so cheap to run compared to an internal combustion truck. And when you combine that with the excellent ride quality, this has been an absolute joy to live with. But the number one thing I've learned, especially within the last two weeks, is buy the most affordable one you can get. And I'm not talking in markups, that too, but the most affordable trim because you really don't miss out on much by going for a Pro or an XLT. The Lariat's nice, the Limited's nice, but it's just not thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars better than like a Pro or an XLT. So those are the ones, in my opinion, that are just the most screaming deal of any new vehicle you can buy. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we'll have a lot of more coverage coming with the new Hummer EV. We'll put that through its paces as well. But as always, this has been Tommy behind the camera. Case Kona, as always, we'll see you in the next video. So as always, alltfl.com, one-stop shop is where you can find everything automotive, one place. And we'll be doing a lot more on all of our channels. Yeah, you know so what? stay tuned. I think what we should do is find out if it uses actually as a work truck. Yes. Wouldn't that be cool? Actually, tow trailers yeah, uh, work yeah. on the farm, too. Yeah, as opposed to just a toy, right? Yes. And I got to take it to Moab, dude. Moab, yes. <laughs> All right. See you guys next time. Ciao. With helicopters. Helicopters.